Hi friends, it's Sam and okay, here's the story. The other day I was playing around watching YouTube videos and I came across a viral video by Tasty of how to make the perfect chocolate chip cookies. Now I am a big sucker for chocolate chip cookies. In fact, I think it might be my most favorite dessert ever. So when I saw this video, I wanted to make them immediately. But there was a problem. Tasty's recipe is not vegan. So I thought it would be kind of fun to show you guys how I can take a recipe and make it vegan. And so today I'm gonna do Tasty's perfect chocolate chip cookie recipe made vegan. Yeah, love it. Now I have never made this recipe before. I've never veganized it before. I'm gonna be trying for the first time on camera with you. So I hope I get beginner's luck and get it right the first time. I'm excited to make chocolate chip cookies. Let's get to it. So I'm looking at this recipe and I can tell you that it's already a lot more complicated than I normally like to make my recipes. It's got about 14 ingredients and about 13 steps. Whereas my recipe in my cookbook has 8 ingredients and 4 steps. So definitely a little bit more complicated but let's hope the extra effort is worth it. Okay, so the first four ingredients Tasty's recipe calls for is bread flour, all-purpose flour, salt, and baking soda. Totally vegan already. We don't need to do anything there. It says sift them together. So all right, we're gonna do it. Now it says two teaspoons of kosher salt or one and a half teaspoons of regular salt. I have regular salt, so that is what I'm going to use. Seems like a lot of salt to me. And sift that together. Um, I never sift in my recipes. I'm too lazy to sift. So this is this is new for me. <laughs> All right, sifted. Beautiful. Now the next step is that I have to brown the butter. So let's hop over to the stove and brown the butter. Tasty's recipe calls for one cup of butter. So I'm gonna do the really obvious easy substitute here, which is just vegan butter or vegan margarine, whatever you want to call it. Now later on in the recipe, it calls for one egg and one egg yolk. Now when it comes to cookies, I always find that you don't really need to replace the eggs with any kind of flax or anything like that. Some people will feel differently and that's fine, but in my recipes for cookies, I don't know, you just don't need it. So I'm just gonna replace the richness of those egg yolks with two extra tablespoons of vegan butter. So I'm gonna do one cup plus two tablespoons of vegan butter. Okay, turn on the heat and melt that vegan butter. Beautiful. Woo! Okay, now unexpectedly, this earth balance is ooh, dripping and it's really, really foaming up. More than non-dairy butter would for sure. So foamy. And I realized as making this video that I don't think I've ever tried to brown earth balance butter. So we'll see what happens here. Don't start a grease fire. Really foamy. I can see that the butter is starting to darken underneath this layer of foam though, so I'm gonna keep at it. Hopefully we'll get brown butter out of here. Okay, the foam is chilling out now, and the butter is darkening, so I think it's working. There was just a really foamy moment there. <laughs> oh yeah, starting to smoke. I don't know if you can see that smoke. So I think that's plenty. Woo, smoky. Oh yeah, look at that brown stuff. Weird. So I've got my brown butter here. It needs to cool to room temperature, so I'm gonna pop it in the fridge. Tasty said to add water to make sure that you have one cup of butter. I already have one cup of vegan butter here, so I don't need to add any water. I'm just gonna pop it in the fridge now. I might need to add a couple tablespoons of water later on in the recipe to help replace the moisture of the eggs, but I'm gonna wait and see how that goes. So I've got my sugars here, my espresso powder, my vanilla, and the recipe calls for dark chocolate. So I just picked up a vegan dark chocolate, dairy-free, just check the back of the ingredients, and I'm gonna just pop it up. And it is such a dark, rainy day. Um, I don't have proper lighting equipment yet. I really need to get some because I'm a little bit worried that all of this footage is gonna be dark and grainy, and so if it is, I'm sorry. So I need one cup of the dark brown sugar and half a cup of white sugar. One teaspoon of espresso powder. I actually really like this addition idea. Espresso powder enhances the flavor of chocolate, so that would be why they use it. And two teaspoons of vanilla extract. So my browned butter feels about room temperature now. It smells 
super browned, like really toasty, maybe on the edge of burnt. I'm a little bit worried that this is gonna taste not good, so we're gonna have to see. Maybe I'll have to make this recipe again and find another substitute that's better. Now there are like brown solids stuck to the bottom of this measuring cup, and I'm guessing that's where all the brown butter flavor comes from, so I'm gonna make sure to get those in there as well. Now mix that up. And it says whip that up until fluffy, so I'm gonna go really give it a good whip. I'm not convinced this is really gonna work just like I was hoping it would. This is not getting fluffy and it's really dark brown. Fluff factor is zero here. I don't think this is gonna work just like the video, but maybe it'll taste great, who knows? Let's see. Now I'm gonna add the dry ingredients about a third at a time as recommended. Mix that in. Yeah, I can really, really smell this brown butter and I don't know that I love the smell of it. So it says to fold in chocolate chips and the dark chocolate. Okay, folding that in. Now, I do think the batter looks a little bit dry, so I'm gonna add a tablespoon or two of water just to get the consistency that I saw in the video. All right, there we go. Okay, so now I'm gonna prepare these cookies, put them on a tray, bake them, and give it a try. All right, I've got my cookies ready to go in the oven. Let's bake them up and see how they are. Let me try this dough, actually, and see how I feel about it. I don't really like it. Ugh. That brown butter flavor is so strong and not very good, I don't think. We'll see how the cookies turn out, but I think I'm gonna have to hash this one again. <laughs> okay, my cookies are out of the oven, and um, they look kind of sad. I don't think this worked really well, and I'm probably gonna have to try it again. So they got kind of flat, they look kind of greasy, which I always find happens when you melt butter before adding it to a cookie. So I don't think I'll melt the butter the next attempt. We'll see. Okay. The cookies themselves taste a lot better than the batter. They're kind of gritty kind of greasy from the melted butter, I think. Pretty sweet, crispy on the outside, chewy in the middle, so they're not horrendous, but they're not great. I think I can do better, so I'm gonna take a little leeway on this recipe, veganize it a little bit more, do some tweaks. Um, I have some ideas, and hopefully this next batch works because I'm gonna run out of chocolate if I'm not careful. Okay, so here's my idea. I had a look at Tasty's recipe, and with my experimentation of the first round, I think I have some ideas of how I'm gonna veganize this, get the same flavors that Tasty's trying to provide, the same textures, except, um, yeah, my own little tweaks. So the vegan brown butter, I don't think really worked. It had a really strong kind of burnt taste, but not in a delicious brown butter kind of way. So I had an idea, in order to get that toastiness, I am gonna take some almond flour, which is just ground almonds, so if you don't have almond flour, you can use ground almonds, and I'm gonna toast that a little bit, and that'll help get some of that nutty, toasty flavor that you find normally in brown butter. I think three tablespoons is what I'm gonna try. Hopefully, it's the right amount. So adding it to my pan, I'm just gonna toast it a little bit until it's a little bit brown, a little bit fragrant. It's a nice golden brown color. Make sure you stir it frequently at the end because it can burn really quickly so you want to keep an eye on it and now the pan is really hot so in order to make sure it stops cooking I'm gonna add it to my large mixing bowl. Whew, smells toasty delicious that's how you know it's done right. Now unlike that brown butter this actually smells really good and not gross and burnt this smells toasty almond delicious yum. So now to this, I'm gonna add all of the remaining dry ingredients. So sticking with the original measurements of the dry ingredients, one cup of bread flour. I really hope this works. I don't wanna to have to do this over again. Half a cup of all-purpose flour. One teaspoon baking soda. One teaspoon of espresso powder. I decided to just add it along with the dry ingredients instead of later on in the recipe, just because I think it'll be better. <laughs> and I did find the cookies really salty. I think that's partly because the recipe originally called for unsalted butter and the vegan butter I use already has salt. So I've reduced the salt to just one teaspoon and I'm gonna try that and see how that works. And now whisk that all together. 
together. So I'm gonna whisk it as well. Tasty didn't call for that in their recipe, but I really wanna make sure, especially that the active ingredients, such as the baking soda, are mixed together so that it's even throughout the cookies. So there's my dry ingredients. Now, my cookies turned out pretty greasy, and I find that usually happens when I use melted butter in a cookie recipe, even if I do let it cool. So I'm not gonna melt the butter, and since I already got those brown flavors from toasting the almond meal, I'm not worried about sacrificing flavor. So one cup of vegan butter, one cup of dark brown sugar, and half a cup of white sugar. All of these measurements so far are the same. And two teaspoons of vanilla extract. Now I'm just completely skipping the eggs. I might need to add a bit of moisture, but since these cookies came out so moist in the first place, I'm gonna wait and see if I need more. Now I'm gonna cream these together until fluffy, and hopefully this time it'll actually get fluffy. Oh, I should've used a bigger bowl. That looks so much better. Okay, now Tasty added the flour mixture into the wet, but I'm gonna do it the other way around. I just like it better that way. Oh yeah, this butter is so fluffy gorgeous. So just scoop all of that goodness in and mix to combine. Oh, I can smell the toastiness of the almonds. Now that is so much better. Look at that dough, it's light years better. Mmm, it tastes like good cookie dough too. I don't even think I need to add in any more moisture. This dough is lovely and fluffy, so I'm just gonna add in the chocolate chips and the chopped dark chocolate. Half a cup of vegan chocolate chips and put all of that chopped chocolate in there. And mix that in. Oh yeah, now that is looking so much better. I'm gonna taste some of this cookie dough. Mmm, so it's good. All right, let's bake these up and see how they work. Oh yeah, nice big scoop. Woo wee, that looks so good already. There we go, those look so much better. I can't even tell you. They're a better color, they're a better texture. I'm really excited about them. I hope they work, so let's pop them in the oven now and give it a try. All right, so I ended up making two trays of cookies. So now let's give it a try. Mmm, smells good. Oh yeah, so good. Mmm, I taste a little bit of the espresso. They're a little bit salty, crispy on the outside, chewy in the middle. Pretty delish. Mmm, super chocolatey. Mmm, I need milk. Okay, now I've got a glass of almond milk. Oh yeah. Mmm, mmm, so good. These are like a really sweet, really rich, toasty, full of flavor. It's definitely a good cookie, and I think. I did a pretty good job of veganizing it the second time, not the first time. The first time was no good. There's something about it, I think it's maybe the dark brown sugar. There's a really strong caramel flavor. Really, really yummy. Mm -hmm. If you wanna try making Tasty's perfect chocolate chip cookies made vegan, I'll put a link to my recipe adaptions down below in the description as well as one up here. If there is another viral video out there that you would love to see me make vegan, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear your ideas. Don't forget to hit that like button before you go and subscribe for a brand shiny new fuss-free vegan recipe every single Wednesday. I'll see you next week. Bon appetit! Ha ha ha!